underground stations in central London tend to be built pretty close together. It's always been that way, right the way back to 1863 when the Metropolitan Railway first opened. With one notable exception. Between Farringdon and King's Cross there's a long stretch with no stations. Today I'd like to take a look at the station they wanted to build between those two, but never did. This is the story of Mount Pleasant Station. So the situation was this. The first section of the Metropolitan Railway to be opened ran from Baker Street to Farringdon. The Metropolitan Railway was built using a method known as cut and cover. It's not exactly tunnelling. What you do is you dig a trench, you lay your track, and then you roof the trench over. Hence, cut and cover. Between King's Cross and Farringdon you have a hill, Mount Pleasant. Here they had to dig a proper tunnel. Now of course it's perfectly possible to build a station in the tunnel, that's how all the deep level tube lines work after all. But this was 1863 and the Metropolitan had all sorts of reasons for not trying it here. The commercial reason was that there just wasn't much hereabouts, just cold bath fields, prison and a few houses. But there were some important technical reasons too. In 1863 the Metropolitan Railway used steam locomotives. Despite ventilation being designed into the tunnels from the start, the atmosphere in the stations was very smoky and unpleasant. Now, the stations were very close to the surface. Imagine the problems with ventilating a station 60 feet below ground. Then there was the question of how you'd get people in there. The lift wouldn't be invented until 1880 and the escalator wouldn't be invented until 1896. 60 feet is about four stories. It's not an impossible climb, but it's not exactly convenient. So there was no way there would be a Mount Pleasant station, and it seems unlikely that such a thing was ever really considered. Until 1910, when the Metropolitan applied for permission to put one right here. You see, a lot had changed in the last 47 years. In 1885, Mount Pleasant Postal Sorting Office was built. This would grow to become one of the largest sorting offices in the world. And of course, it goes without saying that a development that size employs lots of people, people who'll need to get to and from work. In 1890, the City and South London Railway opened, which proved that you could, in fact, build a station in a tunnel. In 1905, this part of the Metropolitan Railway was electrified, so no more steam locomotives. And, of course, by now, lifts existed, and, in fact, were in use on the deep-level tube lines. And so, in 1910, the Metropolitan Railway applied to build a station at Mount Pleasant. It would have been here on Farringdon Road, with a subway entrance on Rosebury Avenue on the corner here. The bill they put in for parliamentary approval specifically stated that the station would have gone from about number 146 Farringdon Road to number 132. As was always the case when applying for such Acts of Parliament, the bill is fairly vague in terms of what they specifically required. This was not them being flaky or underhanded, but it was a necessity. Bills to get a new railway built would usually request permission to acquire more land and property than the engineers would actually need. That was so that in the event of any nasty surprises or changes of plan, they wouldn't have to go through the complicated parliamentary process of abandoning the original plans and applying to enact new ones. Now, for most railways, once they actually had the line built, they would have to give the surplus land back. The Metropolitan did not have to. So they had a neat and lucrative little sideline in property development. So what would this station have been like? Well, the company architect from 1911 to 1933 was C.W. Clark. His style was quite distinctive. I think given the site, we'd get something like the district line entrance at Paddington, which dates from 1915. His style remained quite similar into the 1920s, as can be seen with Wilsdon Green, which was built in 1925. Interestingly, the bill allows for escalators to be installed. At the time, there were no escalators on the underground, although Earl's Court would receive the first in 1911. Granted, escalators are just one of the options for getting passengers to the platforms mentioned in the bill. It also mentions stairs, lifts and inclines, so I suspect that this is another of those covering all the bases measures. Still, it's interesting that they were thinking about it. 
I suspect that there would have been a certain amount of redevelopment around the station, such as shops or offices. The Metropolitan would likely want to make the most of their investment and their land. We might see a much more bustling street now. I'm being purely speculative about the name Mount Pleasant. I've heard it suggested that it would have been called Clerkenwell, but I think that given that the station's primary raison d'etre would have been the sorting office, it would make sense to name the station after Mount Pleasant, like the sorting office. The Metropolitan received the approval to build their station in 1911, but for whatever reason, of course, they didn't do anything with it. At the time, there was a tram line running right past the site of the station, so perhaps the Met didn't want to compete. Perhaps they decided the traffic wasn't there to justify such an expensive work after all. Or perhaps it was some external factor that changed their minds. Whatever the reason was, the permission lapsed in 1932. The following year, the Metropolitan Railway would be absorbed into London Underground, and all their plans would change. So ended the saga of what could have been the only deep-level station on the Metropolitan Line. In recent years, changes in the way the post is handled have reduced the size of Mount Pleasant Sorting Office, and the greater part of the site is now being rebuilt into one of those developments that has a historically significant name, but looks exactly the same as every other new development. It would be interesting to see how this might have been influenced had there been a tube station here. Mind you, there is an underground railway station at Mount Pleasant, and has been for nearly a century, but... Well, that's another story. Well, I hope you enjoyed this pleasant tale from the Tube. If so, please do click the like button and subscribe for more on Tube Stations, speculative and actually built alike. Thanks as always to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon. You are the escalators to my platforms. And I'll see you all again very soon for another tale from the Tube.